If you want a simpler way of adding vignettes to your photos in Photoshop, then you'll love the tricks in this tutorial. So let's get into it. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com where we love to talk about photography and photo editing and today we're going to talk all about creating vignettes in Photoshop. Now vignettes are really great for isolating your subject or drawing more attention to the center of your photo. They work by darkening the edges in a circular shape and in Lightroom for example it's all done with one slider. Now in Photoshop at first glance there isn't that simplicity for creating vignettes. A lot of people will go and create selections and color fill layers and do this big complicated process that in my opinion doesn't need to be done because there's a way easier way of doing things with the help of Camera Raw. So in this tutorial, you'll learn the best ways to add a vignette in Photoshop, whether you're editing a raw photo or just a regular JPEG file, this technique will still work perfectly for you. So let's hop into Photoshop and see how it works. So here in Photoshop, the first thing we need to do is open Camera Raw. Now, if you open a raw file directly into Photoshop, Camera Raw will open automatically. However, if you're like me and you have a photo that's just a JPEG file already open in Photoshop, you have to follow a little bit of a different method. Now, when you're working with Camera Raw, unless you're using a smart object, everything that you make will become permanent. So let's first convert our image into a smart object. You'll understand why we're doing that later on in this tutorial. To convert your image to a smart object, just right click on that layer and go to convert to smart object. It'll take a moment to do its thing and then once it's done you'll see this icon right here indicating that your layer is in fact a smart object. Now to open camera raw all you have to do is select that image layer and go to filter and then down to camera raw filter. Inside of Camera Raw, this looks a little bit like Lightroom. It has all of your basic settings right here and it works great for making quick adjustments to your photos. Now for vignettes, the one you wanna care about is the effects tab. So we can click on that and it will open our options for us. Now here you see the vignetting slider and this is where all the magic is gonna happen. If you drag it upwards, you'll add a white vignette. Well, if you drag it down, you'll create a black vignette. Now by itself, this slider is pretty basic. However, there are some pretty awesome advanced settings that you can access by clicking this arrow right here. Clicking on that, you now have a bunch of different sliders to help refine how that vignette looks really easily. As for the style, just leave it to highlight priority. You don't really need to change that in this case. Now let's quickly go through what each of these settings does for you. Starting with the midpoint, as you increase the midpoint, it makes your vignette tuck further to the edges of your photo and make it less and less noticeable. As you bring down the midpoint, it stretches further to the center of your image and extends the size of your vignette. So depending on how much of your photo you want your vignette to cover, adjusting the midpoint will help fix that for you. As for the roundness, increasing the roundness will turn your vignette from an oval, which is that default shape of a vignette, to a circle. If you bring it down, it's going to change that oval into a rectangle or whatever the shape of your photo is. So notice how as I bring down this roundness, it's pretty much turned itself into a rectangle rather than the oval that it originally was. Lastly, for the feather, if you're familiar with the brush tool, you probably already know what the feather does, but as you increase the feather, it makes that vignette softer and blend better into your photo, while as you decrease the feather, like so, it becomes really hard and very obvious. So depending on how well you want that vignette to blend into your photo, you can use the feather adjustment to help fix that. Now for the final slider is the highlight slider, and this helps to refine where your vignette actually takes place in your highlights. So in this case, looking at our sky, this is a perfect example actually, as I increase the highlights, look how the vignette starts to affect less and less of the sky because that's where the highlights are. So then you aren't darkening any of those bright areas of your photo and you can blend the vignette a little bit better rather than the just default setting right here. So now that we understand what all of these settings do, let's just reset everything back to normal and go through them one by one to create our vignette. So for this example, I want a darker vignette. So I'll drag it down and add a darkening around my photo like so. I'll then drag in the midpoint just a little so I make it a bit more predominant in the image. From there, I'll maybe change the roundness, turn it into a bit more of a circle so then it's affecting the top and bottom more than it is the edges here. Now for the feather, I obviously don't want it to look super sharp and obvious like this. So I'll just blend out the feather a little bit from its default setting. Then for the sky to help that blend in a little bit more, I'll increase that highlights value and then it's not gonna affect my sky as much as it was before. From there, I can decrease the vignetting 
a little bit more if I would like a stronger effect. Likewise, I can increase it if I want to make it a bit less obvious. So something like this looks pretty good to me right there. And then I'm going to click OK. That's going to apply onto my photo. And now we have successfully created that vignette. And because we used a smart object, it's been applied as a smart filter right here. So turning that on and off, you can see the huge difference that that quickly made in our photo and adds a really nice and clean looking vignette with only using a few sliders. Now, if you wanted to go back and adjust this vignette for whatever reason, all you have to do is double click on this camera raw filter right here. Double click on that. It'll open up your camera raw filter once again with all of your same settings so you can continue to edit them. If you were not using a smart object, all of those adjustments would be directly applied onto your photo and you wouldn't be able to access them later on. So using a smart filter just makes life a little bit easier so you can edit non-destructively and go back later on if need be. So that is my favorite way of creating vignettes in Photoshop because you don't have to make any selections, you don't have to fill any layers or anything like that. You just move a few sliders around and you're good to go. So Camera Raw really has a ton of great stuff and vignetting is one of those great things within that little feature of Photoshop. So if you enjoyed today's tutorial and you learned something today, then make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Anyways, that's all I have for you for now. Again, my name's Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.